Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. I am David Waybright, and I'm here with Jeremy Salinas today to talk about Lisboa from Vital Lacerda. Coming out from Eagle Griffin Games, this game is a pretty heavy game. It is. Like all of his games, but not as heavy as you might think, I don't think. Yeah, let's weigh it in a scale. So I, I, my, my guesstimates from the games that I've played of his so far is that this is probably on the lightest end of his big box games followed closely by Venus and then the Galleries, which is probably the hardest of all of them. Yeah, and when you say lightest, that's also still extraordinarily heavy game. Sure, At least compared sure, to what I generally sure, play. Sure, but once you learn the mechanics of yeah. this game, it's very simple, compared to, uh, comparatively speaking, to the other games that he's created. True. Uh, so this is all about recreating the city of Lisboa. Yeah, or or Lisbon, Lisbon at the yeah. time. Uh, so in, I think you told me in 1755, yeah. there was a massive earthquake that hit the city. And devastated it, followed by a tsunami, and then three days of fires. Three, yeah, it was water, fire, <laughs> and earthquake damage, right. which is a big part of this game. And it's interesting, we had a chance to talk with the designer uh, who's from there. Yeah. And this seems like a game that was very near and dear to his heart. It really played well to me to hear him talk about right, it. Right. He did a lot of research. He's been spending like three plus years working on this thing. So to understand the game, you kind of understand the backstory too, yeah. why he created the game. Uh, during that time period, there were three people who basically worked together to rebuild the city. And that's what you're doing in this game. You're working with uh, Manuel de Maya, who was the architect, right. the Marquis, and then the King. All these have very specific tasks that allow the players to do things in the game. And then on the right-hand side of the board, you have the actual city. The city is broken up into streets. Right. And you're placing basically stores on these streets that have to rebuild the city. Yeah, sort of revitalizing it. And you'll notice around the streets, there's three colored cubes. And those represent brown for the rubble. Right, the earthquake uh, damage. The earthquake damage, red for the fire damage, and blue for the tsunami damage. Yeah. And basically what you're doing is you're taking those cubes off the board placing them onto your board, which allow you to build stores into those locations. Yeah, I think it's really cool. You see a board, any board game with cubes all over, you think these are resources that you're going to be taking. And in a way, these are resources. Sure. But the fact that it's damage that you're taking off of a city is really, really cool. Right. Um, also surrounding the board, you have the actual stores over here on the left-hand side. You'll be placing these on the street. And it's really cool because these have entrances to them that can be flipped depending on right. which kind of street you wish to build on. There's four main resources in the game. Uh, there's gold, there's silk, there are books, and then there are tools. Right. So depending on the way you flip the tiles, that's the kind of uh, resource that you'll be building with those specific stores. Exactly. They kind of represent the different districts that they built when they were rebuilding the city. Right. There's various districts, and you can you really use that side of the board however you'd like in terms of placement of those stores. The goods in the game, as we just mentioned, have values to them, and those values will go down as you produce them in the game. It's represented by that one through six track at the bottom, and it's really cool in this game. Once a resource is uh, produced, it goes down in value, right. and it can never go back up. So the more that you produce it, the less value it is when you actually ship it out on the ships in the exactly. game. Exactly. A really, a really cool nod to just the basic supply and demand. Uh, there is a treasury uh, that affects two different things. One, it affects any time you place a treasury card, you get money from it. That uh, will go up and down. But it also affect, uh, affects the influence um, that you will have to use, either more or less, uh, depending on certain actions that you take in the game. Now... This is very similar to those people that played the Gallerist. Influence is used in the same kind of way as that game. You can use influence instead of money, depending on where you are on the track on the bottom. Right. You can basically waste, if you're high on the influence track, if you're in a pinch and you need some money, mm -hmm. at any time you can just reduce your influence and take money as indicated on the track. And you also need influence to take certain actions too. Right. When you visit so, these three main guys in the game, you have to actually pay your influence to them to be able to use them. Yeah, and it's cool. This treasury track, the, the dynamic between the money and the influence makes a lot of sense because when things are really going well in the city and the treasury is high, money's flowing, yeah. it takes less influence when you're talking to the nobles. Then, of course, when times are bad, you need a little bit more influence with That's right. Uh, also, there is a church where the clergy uh, will go around and round in a clockwise fashion. Right. Uh, every time it passes two different things, it affects it. One, uh, 
every time it passes the starting mark, it makes the treasury go back up. Right. Anytime it passes the opposite mark, it allows players to ditch some clergy tiles in order to gain victory points and gain more influence, because that's one of the only two ways in the game that you can actually gain influence. Right. Um, now, uh, quick note, uh, you also see on each of these locations, underneath the rubble and on the board, there are icons. Anytime you build on these locations, you get immediate uh, benefits to them. Right. This is a quick rule of thumb with this game. When you cover anything up, mm -hmm. you get that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so also in the game, there are decrees. These, uh, there's eight of them out. Um, they're refilled at the end of a player's turn. These are end of the game scoring. Right. They allow you to gain victory points for if you have the most silk, uh, if you have the most buildings in row E or D, and a whole variety of different things. I think there's over 80 of these unique end of the game scoring cards. There are a lot of them. Obviously, with all the different things going on in a game like this, there's a lot of permutations of where you can get your points. Mm -hmm. And it even it just goes exponentially on that with these decree cards. Another thing I'd say about these, uh, for me, for a player like me, it's good to get some of these decrees, in my opinion, early. It can give the player a little direction. Sure. Because, like I said, this game is a little heavier than what I'm usually used to. So you look at this and you're like, what do I do first? So the decrees can really kind of help inform you as to where you're going to get your points if you're looking at this thing and thinking... What do I do first? Yeah. Uh, there's also a player board, and this is probably the most important portion of the game. The player board uh, looks like an eye, in a, in a way, <laughs> and it has a top slot and a bottom slot. Each of these have three locations on them. So think that there are three possible cards you can slot in the top, and then three possible cards in the bottom. You can always replace old cards, but you can only hold so many, and that's dependent upon this little section down here. At the start of the game, you're only allowed to hold two cards in a combination of both yeah, of them. Totally so you could two. have two on top, two on bottom, or one on each. As you take rubble off of the board and you make sets of those three specific colors, you can hold more cards. Exactly. It's also kind of a way that the game moves forward. Uh, when the first player gets two of those, it moves into the second phase of the game. And we'll get right. into that in just a moment. Uh, also on here, there's a place to hold the resources that you have. You can only hold two of each resource at the beginning as you build uh, more into your city. You can hold three and then right. four. It's as tied, you... tied to that rubble just like the cards are. Right. Um, you can hold four clergy tiles. Again, these tie back to the clergy member down here. Those all give you unique benefits in the game and very specific ways, very similar to the decrees, but they're ongoing. Exactly. always happen when they occur. Um, and you can place four of those on this location. This is where you can build your engine in this game for sure. Right. Um, these will hold all of your buildings that are color specific to you. Whenever you build a store onto the main board, you're going to take one of your cities off any one of these locations and put it onto that store, denoting that that is your location. But it also could possibly open up benefits to you, depending upon the ones that you uncover. Yeah, it's a nice little development track. You know, you have to take from the bottom first and go up, but it uncovers, again, some ongoing powers that can really help define how you play the game. Right. Uh, there are places for the two colored architects in the game. There's a green architect and a blue architect. These tie back into the types of architects and buildings or stores that you can actually build. Yeah, well, and the, the, game. the uh, public houses, which is another type of building. Right. You know, we've already, as you go through this player board, we can already tell there's a lot going on in this sure. game, but we promise it's a lot easier to play than it seems. There are places for royal decrees. You're only allowed to have one of the royal decrees of each of the both uh, of the uh, the three different political figures in the game. Um, these will allow you to kind of mimic what someone else is doing in the game, right. and they it's, can be held in this location. It's, the, it's their favor, and they show favor to the player, so you can follow people when they take a turn. Uh, so this is the most important portion of the game, and the reason for that is that every turn, a player will start with five of these cards in their hand, and what they're going to do is they're going to decide on how to use their card. They either slot it onto the top, or they slot it onto the bottom, and whatever they cover. Now these cards, uh, there's a couple different things you needed to note about the cards. There is a top action, there is a bottom action, and then there's typically either one of the political figures on it, or a type of... Um, treasury card. Yeah, like a treasury type card, which this one shows the build action. Um, so anytime you cover something up, you take the action of the portion that you cover. Right. Um, <laughs> That's just the beginning, right? That's just the beginning. In addition to playing your cards on your portfolio or your yeah. tableau, you can also play cards to the board. Yes. So either of those two types of cards, and that's the kind of cards you're looking at. There's noble cards and there's treasury cards. Right. When you play them onto the board, you're going to be playing them right here. Yeah. And if you play a noble card... Yeah. We'll just do that, for instance. We'll play uh, him there. And if I am the 
uh, green player, I put my guy on there. Saying right. That so I've you, taken that action. Exactly. Then you're going to meet with the noble yeah. of that same card. So yeah. then you can take the actions associated with that noble. Right. And this, as Jeremy was saying, the favor comes into play. Or if Jeremy were to do this, I could play favor to follow him and do the same thing out of turn. Yeah. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing is when you play a treasury card up here, you are sponsoring an event. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to sort of in a similar fashion, but using money instead of influence, do some of the actions down here below as well. Right. And there's uh, there's some other rules. I mean, there's a lot of rules in this game. When you go and, and want to meet up with one of these nobles, you have to pay influence in order to do it. The influence that you pay is the number of officers. Now, there's also a portion on this board where you're going to have officers down here. Right. Throughout the game, you're going to be placing these officers into these specific locations underneath these political figures. When a player goes to those, they're going to be paying uh, influence depend upon the number of officers of other players that they have. If they don't have those uh, enough to right. pay that in influence, they can't take the action. Exactly. Um, so the actions of each of these uh, different people uh, allow you to do different things. So uh, the architect allows you to actually build tiles onto the streets. Yeah, that's who builds the stores out onto the city streets. The marquee allows you to earn royal decrees. Mm -hmm. And then the king allows you to build the public houses around the edges of the board. Yeah, and the public houses, let's talk about those for a sure. second. Because the scoring, part of the scoring that comes into play here is when you're pl placing your stores out into the city. But those stores aren't going to score unless there are public houses. You'll see these spaces surrounding the city. If there's a public house above or below the city that you place, you're going to score points that are de yeah, depicted you're, down you're, here you're below. You're kind of looking at the cross intersection to see where those things hit. If you have a store that's in that location, you're going to look straight down and see how many points you're going to yeah, score. Yeah, and w what's cool about it is you can score points when you place a store. You mm -hmm. can also score points when you place a public house. Right. And they're two different actions. So you could place public houses out first and then place stores very strategically to maximize the points on those stores. Yeah. Uh, vice versa, maybe not so many points, but when you place the public house, it scores all of the stores in a city street or in a row. Dependent upon whether or not it matches the same color. So exactly. the public house, if it's, a public, if it's a public house that just sells tools, the side of the street that you built on has to be on the tool side. Right. So the entrance has to lead into that location. Uh, now, one of the things we forgot to mention, this is extremely important too, if you don't place your card out here and you place it in one of these two uh, locations, you still get to take actions, right? Uh, so the two actions that you can take is either selling your goods to a ship. Right. So the goods that you have here can be sold to a ship and there's a way to gain ships in the, in the building. This is really cool too, portion too, is that you don't have to have your own ship. You can sell on other people's ships, right. which will give them victory points, but it gives you money, which will be able to allow you to go out there and build more stores and to build more public houses and whatnot. The other thing that you can do is you can meet up with one of these nobles and be able to do something. And you're allowed to do that twice. Right. Uh, those actions that you can take are underneath the noble. And to the left of these uh, very specific actions, there's six main actions that you can take. Uh, one is to get two public officials, one is to get architects, build buildings, produce, get royal decrees, and then move up to clergy. Right. But you have to pay resources to those specific public figures in order to do that. And that's all underneath these things. Each of them take a very specific type of public or um, resource. resource in order to power their abilities. Yeah, you can use gold with all of them, yes. but the other resources, tools obviously for the builder, books for the marquee, and silk with the uh, the king right. uh, in order to take these tr these actions and when you do this you can take up to two of these different actions all right. six it, it doesn't matter what type of noble card you played mm -hmm. you're able to go here and visit I think as they yeah, say the nobles so you can take any of those six actions but you can't on that take the main action of any of these right. so the game moves actually really quickly surprisingly it... so <laughs> all you're doing is you're taking a card from your uh, from your hand and you're doing one of those actions either top bottom and you when you do that you have to take the action you can't choose not to do it so if you can't place the card it's a must action so you have to physically be able to to do one of those things exactly i think this game like many other games the mechanics of it are very simple yeah. you're playing a card now what does that card do yeah well one of what many feels things. like a million things sure so once you get a grasp of that 
it's very, very simple and very, very quick to play. Like, to look at this game and think how quickly got, we got through our games is right. pretty phenomenal. Right. Uh, once you play your card and you take your actions, you have to draw from the tableau up here. You physically get to see what kind of card you want to take, whether you want to take a king action in the next turn or whatever it may be. You have that option to take that card. You flip up a new one, and it's the next player's turn. The first part of the game ends when only one stack remains, or when a player has put two sets of rubble onto right. their player board. Once that happens, everybody has an option to turn in cards, to get benefits. Uh, you're going to take away all the cards here, put new cards in, which are these brown cards, which are just uh, better cards, so to speak. Right. They allow stronger abilities in the game. And you're going to keep playing until another only one stack remains of that, or until a player builds out all four rows of right. their, uh, their player board. At which point... You finish the round, and then there's one final round at the yeah. end. It's important to note in mid-game, as soon as the mid-game uh, transition is triggered, it's a hard stop. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the game, it's a little bit different, which I like. Yeah. And there's a ton of ways to score victory points in this game. <laughs> you score victory points for the ships that you have, for the sets of rubble that you have. Uh, there is a majority minority for the types of buildings. Yeah, the different colored stores that you have. Uh, coins. Uh, decrees, you're going to count up all the decrees that give you points. Um, the most architects that you use to build public houses right. will go in there. And then if you have any royal decrees that you did not use at the end of the game. This is a, it seems like it's really complicated, and it, and it does. The first time you play it, there's a lot going on, but it's really unique in the way that everything kind of ties in together, David. You have you you have the architects that go out, you have the officials, the officers that you have to use to build them, so you're constantly pumping stuff onto your player board to be able to get certain actions, and they're using those actions to go out to buy the goods, to produce the goods, which have to be used to power to exactly. do other things. I mean, it's, it's, it's a constant flow of deciding what you want to do, when you want to do it, and linking all those actions together. Yeah, like any good heavy Euro, there's a lot of interconnected dynamics going on here. Right. I've found with this one, once you've played it, and once you also, and for me anyway, appreciate that theme and how it wraps around this game, it all makes sense in a way that makes mm -hmm. it far easier to play than I think a lot of other games of this sort. Sure. We forgot to note that this is just a prototype. As you can see, yes. it's, it's a box that's put together. Uh, if you guys go to the Kickstarter page, there's some really good images of what the final game is going to look like. Yeah, and they have changed some of the art and some of the yeah. elements for sure. But this is, you know, this is a, it's a nice prototype. We had, we had a great time playing with it. Um, and I think we've covered just about, I mean, it well, may not sure. feel like you know how to play the game yet. No. <laughs> and you won't. Uh, and it is a little bit daunting at first. But like many games, once you get a play in, uh, it's just so much easier to play. And there is a fantastic player aid, which we did not have the first time we tried playing it. Right. But there is one that exists that tells you what each of the decrees do in the game, what each of those clergy tiles. The clergy tiles are really awesome because, yeah. again, those allow you to kind of break the norms of, of the game, allow you to do very specific uh, things like get an extra coin every time you pull rubble off the board, those type of actions, which kind of break the rules of the game and allow you to tailor your play style to to the tiles it's, that exactly. you get, and then to go after the decrees that you that you want to go. Yeah, it to also get, so. includes a nice breakdown of sort of it's not a flow chart per se, but it, it breaks down what you do on your turn. Sure. If you play your card here, here are the branching things you could do. If you yeah. play your card here, so on. Right. So once you have that player, it, it that that really did help a lot. Yeah. So guys, that is Lisboa by Vito Lacerda. It's coming out on Kickstarter, we believe. Very, very soon. As soon as you see this video, yes. quite possibly. Uh, make sure you guys make comments in our YouTube channel below. Please subscribe to us. Check out our own Kickstarter currently up right now. Absolutely. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.